As part of the NextGen airspace system, the FAA is using Datalink technology to improve the efficiency of communication between pilots and air traffic controllers. The implementation of DCL is the first phase of this initiative. In the future, you'll be able to request and receive ATC clearances in flight using FANS. As a quick review, CPDLC stands for Controller Pilot Datalink Communications. DCL stands for Departure Clearance. In the U.S., DCL uses the FANS Datalink network to provide IFR clearances on the ground. DCL is like PDC, however DCL over FANS has a few added features that make receiving IFR clearances quicker and more efficient. In this video, we'll cover the differences between DCL over FANS versus PDC and DCL at non-U.S. airports. Flight planning requirements for DCL logging onto FANS and receiving a clearance, clearance revisions, and we'll also look at various climb-out instructions you may see in a DCL clearance. This video applies to aircraft equipped with Honeywell Flight Management Systems. Depending on your model of aircraft, the screens may look different. However, the process is the same. DCL in the U.S. is different than DCL in Europe and other non-U.S. airports. DCL at non-U.S. airports uses the ACARS network and is accessed through the ATS pages on the MCDU. DCL at non-U.S. airports is similar in functionality to PDC in the U.S. DCL in the U.S. uses the FANS 1A network and is accessed using the ATC pages on the MCDU. By using the FANS network, DCL in the U.S. provides added functionality that is not possible with traditional PDC, such as the ability for controllers to send amended clearances directly to aircraft. All references to DCL in the remainder of this video will refer to DCL over FANS. DCL will be available at all U.S. airports where PDC is currently available with the goal of improving efficiency of the current system, especially in peak traffic or bad weather conditions. Like PDC, operators are not required to use DCL. Because the DCL service uses FANS CPDLC, pilot notification of uplinks as well as message formatting will be the same as existing CPDLC messages. Prior to using DCL, Operators must indicate their Datacom communications capabilities in Field 10A of the ICAO Flight Plan form. These codes can be found on the FAA ICAO FPL Quick Guide. In addition, ATC will automatically provide the clearance using your preferred delivery method if you file the proper DAT code in Field 18 of the Flight Plan. These codes can be found on the dcis.harris.com website in a document titled CPDLC End-to-End -end Description. For example, this code is used when an operator prefers DCL as the primary clearance delivery method and PDC as the secondary method. In this case, the controller will automatically send a DCL to the aircraft. A PDC will be sent only in the event the tower is unable to send it via DCL. To request a clearance using DCL, check to see if the airport has CPDLC DCL capability. Next, log on to FANS by entering the logon ID. As of October 2017, the FAA has transitioned to a single sign-on ID for CPDLC. The logon ID for every airport in the U.S. is now KUSA. Check that the flight ID and tail number are correct. The FAA uses the flight ID and the tail number to match the aircraft with a proper filed flight plan. Push Send. You can complete the logon any time during pre-flight operations. However, an ATC connection will typically not be established until approximately 30 minutes prior to your proposed departure time. 
The message ATCCOM established indicates that a CPDLC connection is established. Once a connection is established and you are within 30 minutes of your proposed departure time, ATC will automatically send your clearance. You do not have to manually request a clearance. During weather events or peak traffic times, ATC may delay sending an automatic DCL clearance up to 20 minutes prior to departure or less. As with a PDC or voice clearance, if your filed flight plan matches the issued clearance, your clearance will be cleared as filed. First, let's look at a cleared as filed clearance, as this is the most common scenario. Once the uplink is received, access the ATC uplink page. A cleared as filed clearance will be sent as free text. A DCL will contain all the required elements of a clearance, such as the clearance limit, assigned SID, the flight plan route, climb instructions, initial cruise altitude, and squawk code. When you are cleared as filed, there is no option to reject the clearance. Accept the clearance by selecting Accept and push Send. After accepting the clearance, enter the departure runway and SID into the flight plan as necessary. If there is a change to the filed flight plan, flight crews should treat the DCL clearance as they would any voice or PDC clearance when reviewing and accepting the amended route. A DCL clearance can be made up of multiple parts or elements, each delineated by a backslash. Some elements of a revised clearance may be loaded directly into the pending flight plan. In this example, we have been cleared to Charlie Echo Whiskey via a new route. The text between the plus signs is a reminder to the pilot to load the route that ATC has sent. The free text that follows displays the entire clearance, including the revised portion of the route and SID with transition if applicable. Because there may be changes to SIDs, transitions, and non-route related elements of the clearance, such as departure frequencies and squawk codes in the free text field, it is very important to always review all the MCDU pages containing the ATC uplink. In this case, in addition to the revised route, ATC has assigned a new SID. At the time this video was produced, the FAA did not include SIDs as part of a loadable clearance, and therefore they must be loaded manually into the flight plan. This functionality may be implemented in the future. In this example, the revised route can be automatically loaded into the pending flight plan, but we have to remember to manually add the new SID and transition. Select ATC Clearance if you'd like to view a textual description of the revised portion of the uplink. Keep in mind, these pages only show a textual description of the loadable portion of the clearance and not the entire clearance. Return to the last page of the uplink. Select Apply to load the uplinked clearance into the pending flight plan. Review and evaluate the changes to the flight plan. Once all the waypoints are verified, return to the ATC uplink page. If you are unable to accept the changed route for any reason, select Reject. If you need more time to evaluate the route, select Standby. If you can accept the route, select Accept. Verify your response and push Send. Return to the flight plan pages and activate the pending flight plan. As before, enter the runway and SID as necessary. An additional feature of DCL is ATC's ability to make revisions to a previously issued clearance. A revised clearance can be sent to the aircraft at any time prior to the aircraft being handed off to the tower for takeoff. The revision can be as simple as an altitude change 
or as complex as a full reroute. Carefully review the clearance. Load the uplinked route into the pending flight plan by selecting Apply. Remember to add or modify the runway and SID if applicable. If the new route is acceptable, activate the changes. Then, return to the ATC uplink page and accept the clearance. If further clarification is needed, contact ATC by voice. In addition to a SID, a DCL may include climbout instructions. The following examples show clearances that include SIDs and climbout instructions. They also show revised clearances with changes to the SID or climbout instructions. In this example, the climbout instructions are Fly Heading 160. If a revision to the clearance modifies the SID and deletes the climbout instructions, the revised clearance will contain the new SID and no climbout instructions. If a prior clearance had both a SID and climbout instructions, and the revision removes the SID but retains the climbout instructions, the revised clearance will contain the text No SID and will still include the climbout instructions. If a revised clearance removes both the SID and climbout instructions, the uplink will specify No Departure Procedure. Once airborne, an ATC-initiated CPDLC disconnect will take place. This usually happens 5 to 10 minutes after departure. Note that there is no automatic transfer of a CPDLC connection between a control tower and an oceanic center that uses FAN's data link. So remember that you will need to log on to the oceanic facility at the appropriate time. Some important things to remember when using DCL. If a revised clearance does not load properly into the FMS, the message Unable to Load Clearance will be displayed in the scratch pad. If this happens, first reject the message, and then contact Clearance Delivery by voice. There are situations where you may need extra time to analyze a DCL reroute for fuel or other operational reasons. When a timely response is not possible, send the standby response to ATC. And as always, if there is any doubt or confusion about the clearance received via CPDLC, contact ATC by voice. DCL and Datacom are new and evolving technologies. For the latest changes and information specific to your aircraft type, refer to the Honeywell Pilots Gateway at pilots.honeywell.com.